coming at you from my mom's place today. She loves roosters. She loves decorative art that is questionable. But she loves me and my kids and I love her too. And I playfully love ribbing her. But it's all in good fun. And that's needed in times like these. Uh, this past week, these past 24 hours especially have felt really dark. So much negative news, and I'll get to all of that later today, as well as the, the AMA Awards and more. But I wanna start off by talking Taylor Swift. Her new album is here, or at least it is for me. The album leaked Reputation was released on the internet a good 12 hours before it was made officially available. And somebody sent it to me. I did not download it illegally myself, but somebody sent it to me. So I didn't do something illegal. Somebody else did and they sent it my way. I just wanted to establish that. No law breaking this way. But I've listened to Reputation more than once now and this is my reaction. My initial reaction is, and she probably did this on purpose, I think. Um, I don't agree with or I don't understand why she released the advanced singles that she did. I think the album has such better music than that. It's clear that Taylor Swift wanted to tell a very specific story and each song adds to that story and there's a reason why she's not doing media interviews because these songs tell the story of what she's been going through the last few years. And this is some of her best songwriting, some of her most honest songwriting. There's even a song, Getaway Car, which details her relationship with Tom Hiddleston and how she viewed it as doomed from the very beginning. That's really honest. You know, there's another song as well about um, I think that one's called I Do Bad Things. Let me look up the song titles here because I want to make sure I'm accurate. I Did Something Bad. You know, a theme throughout the album is Taylor being uh, wronged. And there's a lot of that. There's a lot of people that screwed her over from relationships, Calvin Harris, to friends or fake friends like Kim and Kanye to other fake friends who she didn't realize were fake friends until recently. So Taylor has a big cross to bear, but I do appreciate that in this album, it seems like she has really reflected and is shining the mirror back at herself and is unafraid to say, yeah, I'm not perfect and these are my flaws too. It's not all that person's bad, they're bad, oh, the media. There's a lot of that. She mentions the word reputation a bunch, hence the album title. Uh, but but nothing. Yeah, I'm still I'm still absorbing it all. It's darker than 1989, that's for sure. That's like a sunny, bright daytime album. This is like nighttime dark dancing, drinking, moshing, because, you know, Taylor Swift doesn't really dance. <laughs> she she mosh. I feel like she would mosh with this. She's been drinking a lot. Ooh, she talks about booze a lot. She's been enjoying her wine, her old fashions. This is a drunk album in every sense of the word. Intoxicated by alcohol, intoxicated by love, intoxicated by relationships that went wrong, and the sonic landscape is intoxicating. It's very mature, so I'm not sure how teenagers will respond to this. There might be something to what Diplo said. Taylor is almost 30 years old. I don't know how much teenagers can relate to that, but I think adults will love this album. It's sophisticated, it's smart, um, and it's fun. There are some really fun moments. I, my favorite song, I think, Probably tied, actually, but I give it to the edge. My favorite song is called This Is Why We Can't Have Nice Things. And it's like um, a hip-hop song meets Broadway. Or, um, you know, or nothing, yeah. Like, I, I've got to listen to this album many more times because 
There's many levels to it, many layers. I want to pour over the lyrics. And it takes a real special artist for me to do that and devote my time to that. I still think it's a mistake for her not to stream it. Everybody would have streamed the album, even the haters. But you know, it's her body of work. Uh, once it is on streaming, I will legally stream it and add it to my Apple Music library. And yeah, I just think she really wants to break records. She really wants to be able to show the industry, look who I am, look what I can do. And she's going to great lengths to do that. There's this promotion with UPS that if you buy the physical CD through UPS, they will give you three digital copies. That seems a little sketchy to me. I really hope that doesn't count as three separate sales. Reminds me of that Gaga 99 cent scandal with Amazon. But, you know, girl feels like she's got to do what she's got to do to sell her million plus first week. Uh, but anyways, that's a lot of Taylor Swift. And there are other things that I want to get to today. Uh, I'll briefly touch on the AMAs since a lot of people watch that, including myself. And if you missed it, I've got the best coverage anywhere of the, uh, not the AMAs, the CMAs, the Country Music Awards on PerezHilton.com. A lot of great performances. The best was Carrie Underwood. Simply sensational. I mean, she did win a singing competition show after all. I also really loved Niall Horan and Marin Morris. That was beautiful. Check that out on PerezHilton.com if you missed it. Garth Brooks really underwhelmed me and he has since revealed that he was lip syncing. That was shocking and disappointing to me. This is what Garth had to say about his decision to lip sync. Quote, We are in the middle of 12 shows in 10 days. Not 10 shows in 12 days. 12 shows in 10 days. We did a game time call on whether to sing the track or lip sync and decided to lip sync. The voice just isn't there anymore and you want to represent country music as best as you can. I don't think that's a good representation of yourself. I'd rather somebody cancel or be a little flat than lip sync. It's 2017. Get with the program. Also AMA is related. I was very surprised that Tim McGraw and Faith Hill came out in support of sensible gun regulation. I wanted to really word that carefully because... I don't want to take anybody's guns away. I just want to make it difficult for people with mental health issues to buy guns. And I also want to make it difficult or impossible for people to buy automatic weapons, like these rifles that are meant for war. People don't need that, okay? In my opinion, you don't have to agree with me. But thank you, Tim McGraw and Faith Hill. Uh, let me uh, show you exactly what they said. Um... Tim said, I'm a bird hunter. I love to wing shoot. However, there is some common sense that's necessary when it comes to gun control. They want to make it about the Second Amendment every time it's brought up. It's not about the Second Amendment. Amen. I feel like I need to get up a little bit. I've been getting, I've been lowering myself. <laughs> also, Faith echoed, um, it's everyone's responsibility, including the government and the National Rifle Association, to tell the truth. We all want a safe country. And one way to be safe is to um, respect each other and know your boundaries and your space and not to invade anybody else's safe space which a lot of men have been doing. Oh my God, so many wild stories over the last 24 hours. Let me start in this very unsavory segment right now. There we go. Um, okay, but I do have brighter and lighter news to get to.
Uh, I, I, I just wanna... Ah! Sorry, I just saw some whack-ass person here. Let me block. Block you! Thank you. All right, I feel much better. Okay. Um, yeah, I have some lighter, brighter news, and I'm excited to get to that. But first, Nicki Minaj's brother, Jelani Miraj, has been found guilty of raping his 11-year-old stepdaughter. He is now a convicted pedophile and faces 25 years in prison. Nicki Minaj had previously said that pedophiles should have their hands cut off. I wonder if she still feels that way about her brother. Probably not. I mean, if my sister were a pedophile, I would be shocked, horrified, confused, hurt. But I wouldn't want her hand to be cut off. Anyways, I want to be sensitive here because it is a very delicate, sensitive, awful situation. And Nikki did nothing wrong here. Her brother, a lot of wrong. Also, there was this masseuse on Twitter who shared his story about how John Travolta sexually harassed him and was very inappropriate touching him and making unwanted advances when the masseuse was massaging him. It's a story that has been around for a while, but the masseuse um, is speaking out again. And I'm hearing other stories about John Travolta will start to come out soon. It seems like there's a story plus every day about somebody new. Today, the New York Times did an expose about Louis C.K. Five, I believe, comedians, females, came forward claiming the same thing, that Louis C.K. masturbated in front of them or that he uh, masturbated on the phone, um... Clearly, he thought that was appropriate behavior. Maybe he thought he was flirting with these women or that they would be turned on, but the women shared their stories and that they did not find this welcoming. They did not invite it. They did not want it. And yet Louis C.K. continued anyways. In the wake of this and the women coming forward, HBO has severed all ties with Louis C.K. Also, very unsavory, uh, a third woman has accused Jeremy Piven of sexual assault. If you want to read the details on that, I have it up on PerezHilton.com. Jeremy Piven is denying this as well. A second woman, uh, the very latest, has accused Ed Westwick of Gossip Girl of rape. He also is denying this, calling the claims from both women actresses unprovable or provably false, he said. Ay, ay, ay. Speaking of unsavory men, Kevin Spacey, currently being treated, uh, has been cut out from this movie that he was supposed to be in. And this is wild. The film, called All the Money in the World, is coming out next month. And it's still going to come out. And he's been recast already by Christopher Plummer. And all the other actors are getting together to reshoot ASAP. They're going to edit it ASAP. And the movie is still scheduled to come out in time. It's apparently an award contender. Whew. Craziness. Charlie Sheen, speaking of craziness, is responding to the allegations that he was the one that raped Corey Haim, the deceased actor, when he was just 13 years old, on the set of the movie Lucas. Charlie released a short statement saying, Charlie Sheen categorically denies these allegations. Ay, ay, ay. On to less problematic news, but still upsetting. I've reported how Jay-Z's tour, the 444 tour, has not been selling well. Jay-Z's lawyer has sent a threatening letter to a music website that spoke about Jay-Z's tour not selling well and tickets selling for just $6 in the secondary market. They claim that the tour is his most profitable to date. That's because the high-end tickets are selling for $250, but 
but the low end and middle ones, people aren't buying. I guess like the super fans are buying tickets and they're buying expensive tickets. And that might be why it's his most profitable tour. And he's doing VIP packages as well, which go for even more money. But facts are facts. And everyday folk are not buying tickets. There's still lots of tickets left for Jay-Z's shows. And threatening and intimidating bloggers and journalists, that is lame, Jay-Z. Taylor Swift's team has done that as well. Ugh. Awfulness. In uh, other news that's questionable, <laughs> I wouldn't do this. Um, I would celebrate this, actually. A Grey's Anatomy alum, Marika Dominic... I can't pronounce her last name. She says that... Um, she's not getting hired anymore because she's white. And all of the roles that she used to go out for and get are now pl being played by diverse actresses. I think that's a great thing. You know what? If I lost a role to somebody equally talented and diverse, well, great. They need more representation. We need more representation. I'd love to see more Latinos on TV. I'd love to see more gay, openly gay actors playing gay roles on TV and film. Let us celebrate diversity and not knock others down because you're not getting work. In other news, this was wacky. Uber has revealed that they are going to be launching Uber Air. This is not a joke. Uber is coming out with flying cars as early as 2020. Boom, boom, boom. I will not be flying in an Uber Air car. Those things are gonna crash. Small planes go down. Not for me, no siree, no thank you very much. Also Team Lyft right here. Uber has consistently been problematic. And I want to wrap it up because I know I've gone late today, but I just want to quickly get through a few final items. Caitlyn Jenner has revealed in a new interview that she has not spoken to Khloe Kardashian in two years. She probably deserved it. Also, uh, Scott Disick is telling friends that he's in love with Sophia Ritchie. I give them six more months tops. <laughs> and finally, excitedly uh, two things to end Iggy Azalea has released four new songs yay new music from Iggy Azalea but bless her heart poor thing couldn't even upload them to SoundCloud she sent a Wii transfer file to her fans why that's such a bad look but hey new Iggy Azalea music and even though I'm critical I am a fan. And finally, Star Wars has announced a new trilogy with new characters. If you want to get, to get all the details on that, log on to PerezHilton.com right now and get everything more in-depth that I talked about briefly today. Holy moly, almost 20 minutes long. If you've watched this till the very end, let me know. I want to hear from you. Tweet me, Facebook me, Instagram me. Let me know you watched this video till the very end because this is long and you're awesome. I truly appreciate you. If you watched till this minute, it must be that I'm doing something that you really enjoy and that is so meaningful to me. Thank you for watching. I love ya. I'm not on drugs like that a-hole said earlier. <sighs> look at my eyes. Do I look like I'm on drugs? The pupils are very small. Anywho, uh, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, hit like, hit share, leave a comment, and if you're not doing so yet, follow me. Mwah.